We've got the Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets, two 0-3 teams. Uh, the Broncos devastated by injuries to Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton, Von Miller, uh, other players on their defense, just dealing with injuries across the board. Philip Lindsay potentially returning this week, but like absolutely decimated. New York Jets also dealing with some injuries as well, but their issues I think are more rooted in their organization and their talent versus the Broncos. I'm completely chalking up their failures to injury right now. So two 0-3 teams. One of these teams is either going to get a win or we'll have another Bengals-Eagles situation where we get a tie. The Well, this game started out with an over-under of below 40. It's actually creeped up to 40. And right now the Jets are actually favored to win. That's probably going to be the only time you hear that said this year. Jets are favored to win this game by one and a half points. So right now you have an implied point total of both teams scoring roughly 20 points. And it could go either way. 1.5 is essentially saying it's a heads up pick. So the Broncos are actually giving up a lot of fantasy points to quarterbacks, receivers, and tight ends right now. They've been a bit stingier against running backs. Doesn't really matter in this case because there's not many players on the Jets that we're even considering at this point. But something to note, at least number five to the wide receiver position is something that we want to target. Whereas the Jets have been okay at stopping quarterbacks and wide receivers. They've given up the fifth most points to fantasy running backs and have been average against the tight end. So all that being said, there's not a lot of players that you want to be playing in this game. You know, we've had some pretty fun Thursday night games. Last week was super interesting between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. We had a really good game between the Bengals and the Browns. So this is a, a disappointing way to start week four, but there's a chance that it could still end up being an interesting game. In terms of fantasy, though, there's really not much to talk about. On the Broncos side, even if Philip Lindsay comes back, we're still going to throw Melvin Gordon out there. As I mentioned, the Jets are surrendering the fifth most points to running backs. The Broncos are starting Brett Ripien at quarterback, so they're going to run the ball like crazy. This is going to be, please save us, Melvin Gordon. You are our only hope kind of game. Now, Jerry Judy, I guess you consider starting him, but I, I'm trying to avoid pass catchers in this offense. Noah Fant, I think you kind of have to start at this point. We've seen every single year, it seems like there's going to be a ton of tight ends that do really well and then always seems to come right back around and we only have a couple guys that we can really trust. Noah Fant has been the only, well, not the only, but one of the few consistent guys that you drafted later that's had good weeks each week consecutively. Uh, him and Johnny Smith right now are both in that department. So Noah Fant is pretty much a must start at this point, even in this gross situation. They're going to have to throw the ball somewhat. He could still find a way to sneak a touchdown in for you. So I'm starting both Gordon and Fant. Of course, you're going to be starting the Broncos defense in this one, starting a defense against the Jets has been a uh, way for fantasy gold throughout this season. And I don't see that trend changing here at all. Uh, as we mentioned, really trying to avoid any of the other pass catchers here. Jerry Judy could be okay, but I think his floor is so low. You really don't want to start your week off uh, this early unless you absolutely have to. I would avoid playing Jerry Judy or KJ Hamler. I'm not going to throw Brett Ripien out there, even though it's the Jets defense. And even if Philip Lindsay plays, I'm not going to throw him back in the lineup just yet. I want to see how he looks coming off of that toe injury. I'm not starting Royce Freeman if Lindsay is out. On the Jets side, it is looking positive for Jamison Crowder to return. Last time we saw Jamison Crowder, he was targeted an absurd 13 times. He had a very good fantasy day, over 24 fantasy points. Against the Bills, the Broncos' uh, pass defense is arguably a good bit worse than the Bills, especially due to all the injuries that they've suffered. There's going to at least be one receiver that that comes through that seems to be the MO for the Jets thus far. We saw Braxton Berrios go off last week, but if Jameson Crowder is in, I'm playing him. I trust that he's going to continue to see the ridiculous target share and should give you a pretty decent floor and a nice ceiling there in PPR. It's gross as well, but if you absolutely need a defense, I think you can start the Jets' defense in this one. You know, both of these teams, this should be a pretty low-scoring game. If Crowder is in, I'm probably out on Braxton Berrios or anyone else. We're not starting any, any of the running backs here. We're not starting Sam Darnold. Pretty easy decision there for me. I have the Jets winning this one 17-12. It's going to be a low-scoring affair. Again, trying to uh, avoid playing as many players as we can in this one. There will still be a few fantasy options, but overall, pretty gross game here, and... 
Unfortunately for Jets fans, because it looks like if the Jets are to lose this one, Adam Gase may actually be gone by the end of week four. So, you know, for, for fantasy and for the Jets fan base, we're probably rooting for the Broncos. But I think the Jets pull this one out and uh, get their first victory on the season. Jets 17 to 12. 